Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tejano Traveler. Today we're doing something different and taking a look at some of the famous creeks of Austin. There are several creeks here that are amazing and um, they all have something going on for them. They're a big part of why people like to come to Austin. First one we'll look at is the Show Creek at Northwest Park. This park empties out into the Colorado, like right downtown. So if you follow it through several parks, you'll get there eventually. Another one of my favorite creeks is Walnut Creek. Usually I check this one out over at Walnut Creek Park up in North Austin. It's a great place to go hike. It's a great place to go see some scenery and enjoy yourself taking some shaded walks. Most of the trails lead down to the creek where you can check it out and it forms some cliffs on either side so it's pretty cool coming here and checking that out. One of the most diverse creeks though is Bull Creek. Here we have it at St. Edward's Greenbelt. People like to come here and take a little swim. I've never swam here but it is a pretty cool place to go visit. But I like Bull Creek because it goes through several parks and preserves. There's Bull Creek Park, Bull Creek District Park, Bull Creek Preserve, as you saw, St. Edward. So it crosses through a lot of Austin and it's a winding creek, which gives you a lot to do. Sometimes the water level is low. Sometimes there's places where you can actually swim. Sometimes you can just wade. Sometimes you can just dip your feet in it. But either way, it's a good respite from the hot summer sun. So I like hiking it. I like walking in it. It always feels comfortable. The water's always cool and crisp. And there's different places where you can get in and enjoy the water. So definitely put Bull Creek as one of your top destinations if you are wanting to check out some watering holes here in Austin. Like I said, it's scattered around so it's not just in one area, which makes this creek one of my favorites. The most well-known creek though is Barton Creek. Here we are at Sculpture Falls and Twin Falls. Sometimes they're dry, sometimes they're not, so check online and see if the water is running. But if you can make it after a long hike, this is a perfect place to just throw yourself in and cool yourself off after walking in the hot sun for a while. I really like Sculpture Falls. I think this is Sculpture Falls. I get both of them confused. But I like being here and just hanging out, sitting in the water, especially after that hike that nearly killed me. It nearly killed me on the way back up also, but it was definitely worth visiting. Like I said, Barton Creek is the most well-known creek, but most of the people that interact with Barton Creek do so at Silver Park. Now, they do have Barton Springs, but I decided to concentrate on just the nature part, so that's why I just put Barton Creek. You can rent your canoes and your paddle boats and everything and just sort of have fun in the water, checking things out, floating along. It's a good canoeing and kayaking creek. The water is always pretty deep here in this area and this is where it empties out into the Colorado. And then nearby you have Eanes Creek at the Austin Nature Center. Now it was dry this time but once there's rain it's just kind of fill up and you do get to experience some of the water qualities of it. It was in the middle of summer when I went and it hadn't rained in a long time so the creek was pretty dry. But if you go to the trails behind the Austin Nature Center at Soko Park you can get to this place. Another creek I've been wanting to see was Bee Creek and the only part you can really see was here at the Wild Basin Wilderness Preserve where you hike down to go see the falls. They don't let you get close enough to them though, so this was pretty much as close as I can get. But it is Bee Creek and it was just a creek to check off my list. And then one of the most interesting creeks is Water Creek at Waterloo Park. Waterloo Park has recently been renovated and it looks amazing. And I think this is the future of parks. I mean, look at that. 
It's amazing, and I hope more parks start doing that. My other favorite creek is Onion Creek at McKinney Falls State Park. It's always fun coming here. Sometimes the water in certain places is stagnant just because it's been sitting there for a while. But at other places where it flows, where they have the waterfalls, it's, it's pretty cool and pretty deep. And you can swim, do some diving and everything. It's one of my favorite places in Austin to go to. Now we're going to check out some other creeks like the Wells Branch at Schofield Park. This is a small creek, but it still gives you a little respite from the from the sun. If you're there hiking, you can dip your feet in it and it feels nice and cool and you get to feel refreshed. So some parks just have a small creek going through them and that's good. Little Walnut Creek at Dottie Jane's Park sort of cradles the backside of the park. There isn't any swimming there, but you can still go and check out some of the nature that involves some of the creek. Tannehill Creek at Gibbons Park is also a pretty small creek, but it does sort of also hug the back side of the creek. Seems like most of these parks in Austin have a creek going through them and it gives some, some water qualities to it. Boggy Creek is interesting because it's the only creek in Austin that I see that is completely concreted. Like at the bottom, instead of having rocks and soil and stuff, it's it's just concrete. It reminds me of the race in Greece where they're racing on the LA River and all it pretty much is is concrete. This is kind of like that. I'm not quite sure why it's like that though. We have Blunt Creek at Little Stacy and Big Stacy Park. This creek is um, nestled in between all the big houses over in South Austin, right south of the river. You can find these little parks nestled in between little crooks and nannies as, as the neighborhoods are built around them. It's pretty cool seeing these creeks exist when you think there isn't anything in there. They go, it's just a small little metropolitan park, but now they sort of weave their way in through the neighborhood and become a cool part of it. So definitely check out some of these creeks that are nestled in the neighborhoods. Golden Creek was an interesting creek because I didn't even know it was there. And once I got there, I realized like how big and beautiful it is. There's some shady trails that go around it you can go there check it out i'm surprised it's not a swimming hole um surprised nobody was there when i was there seems like it'd be a perfect place to just go and take a dip in the waters and relax like i said this is another one of those parks that you think there's nothing there but then all of a sudden you get into the hiking trails and you find creeks like these Another creek I had to check out was Williamson Creek. It was currently dry though, so there wasn't much going on there. And the park that it was at, I guess, was being remodeled. So the water wasn't flowing there, but I'm wondering what it would actually look like if we actually had rain. But we don't. We always miss out on rain. Then Bear Creek was just a creek that showed up, and I was curious about it. And... I actually went to Great Lens to try to find this creek and I found it behind a gas station. So I wonder if the police thought I was being weird by hiking behind a gas station. And the last creek on our list is Slaughter Creek at Mary Morse Searite Park. This creek is a long creek, but there's plenty of places where it's dry, so there isn't much there. So you have to find the right place to go to. I wish they allowed swimming here, but there's a big no swimming sign because the waters eventually start looking kind of tempting. You just want to jump in them and do some swimming and floating. It'd be cool. But those are your creeks in Austin. Make sure to take care of them because they provide our water. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.